Hey, hi guys everyone welcome back to my channel leela web dev in today's video we will dive into a very powerful feature in angular 19 that is nothing but http client caching during server side rendering so in this video we will try to explore what is an http client caching and how it works in ssr and browser environments and how to configure the http client caching using the provide http client provide a client hydration and I will try to show you a simple working example of implementing and customizing this feature. So these are the things I will try to explain you. So what is this HTTP client caching? So let me try to explain you this one. So here I will try to open a new one. Yeah. So when an Angular app is running on the server, for example, during SSR, HTTP client can automatically cache outgo outgoing HTTP requests. This cache is transferred to the browser as a part of the initial HTML. And I will try to show you the real time example also. What happens is, for example, let's say that your Angular app is running on the server at the initial load. So you are trying to make an HTTP request. So the server will try to make an HTTP request and it will cache that outgoing HTTP request so that when you try to open this Angular app, so another request will not be made. So this cache is transferred to the browser as a part of the initial HTML. <coughs> In the browser, so what I want to tell you is, so here I will try to paste it here. In the browser, during the initial rendering, Angular checks the cache to reuse the data instead of making a fresh HTTP request, saving time and the resources. Once the app becomes stable, which means the app's critical uh, app's initial rendering is complete, the HTTP client stops using the cache and falls back to the regular behavior. So this is a wonderful and also an actually it's a nice behavior. So what we'll be having, I will try to show you this behavior actually. So now the default behavior. So first of all, what is the default behavior you need to understand? So by default, normally by default, HTTP client caches all the head and the get requests that do not contain authorization or proxy authorization headers. For example, let's say that if you are having any get requests or anything, so if it doesn't have any authorization header or anything, it caches all those requests. For example, if you are fetching a list of products or users with a get request, Angular caches that during SSR and reuses it in the browser. But what if you want to include other requests like post? Angular allows you to configure the caching behavior with the HTTP transfer cache options also. So using this cache options function, so we can also cache the post request also. So let's try now, let's see how to enable this HTTP client caching and configure it for custom use cases. So I will set up a simple Angular app with SSR demonstrating the default caching and then we'll customize it to the include post request. So here, this is our example, right? So already we have our uh, project set up and I will be using the JSON placeholder. I will try to show you the simple uh, request. So this is our JSON placeholder. Okay. And now what I want to do it is, so here let's go to the app.component.ts file. Uh, for this one, let's let, I will create a new component that is nothing but HTTP cache. So I will try to show you this one. So let it create by the time. So here the component has been created. Let's open this app.component.html file and I will remove this entire thing. Okay. And here I will try to use the app hyphen HTTP hyphen cache. So this is our code. And in our component.ts file also I will save it. So that now here we are able to see the output. So here we should be able to see the output. So here. So if I try to check this one in our uh, view source, so you will be able to see that one. Okay. So now we are able to get the HTTP cache works. So now what I will try to do it is, so let's open this uh, HTTP cache dot component dot ts file. So this is our cache file. And here let's assume that I am having a post dollar. Okay. So this is observable of, <coughs> which is of type observable of post. So for this one, I will create an export interface post. So this is our post export interface post. I will have it ID number and I will have a title of type string and I will have another one that is nothing but body of type string. That's it. So these are the things which I'll be having and here I can create. So it is of type post or null is equal to null. So at the starting phase, I have created null. So now when we are trying to get ng on in it, so I want to get the, I want to make an HTTP request. So for this one, what I will do, HTTP inject of HTTP client. So I have injected this HTTP client and let's import this inject also injected. And here I will try to make it this dot post 
dollar is equal to this dot http dot get and which which returns the array of post and here the url will be the json placeholder so this is our url okay that's it so now if you try to observe carefully so here it should be array of post that's it so now if you try to observe carefully so what it will try to do normally this one is not a general client side application it's a server based application so now if you try to see here we are injecting the http client when the page loads so when the when the page automatically loads here so let's try to load it so when the page it is trying to load it so now what will happen is so the server side will try to see this one okay on ng we need to call the server side so before sending it to the html to the browser so it will try to load the request okay it will try to load the try to get the response and it will cache the response and it will say yeah frame the html and send it to the client so now here we are getting an issue okay fine so let's go to the app.config.es file app.config.es file so here we need to provide uh, provide http client that's it so we haven't used this one right so now we are for providing this http client hopefully we should be able to get this one so here if you try to see ng on init so the request is not getting made okay if you try to observe carefully the request is not modified so angular hydrated two components and five nodes so these are all the things it has been added we will try to see about this hydration and concept up to, uh, in the upcoming videos so now here in the network call ng on init call has not been made so now let's try to loop over the data and we'll try to show it whether the data also it will try to show it or not so here i will try to show the div and here i will be having the h2 of post and here i can have a simple table okay and here i can have a t head and here i will show something like tr and th title and another one is the body and t body and here i will be having the tr and here i can loop over uh, the tr directly you can loop over the tr at the rate for <coughs> post sorry post dollar of a sync a sync only right sorry a sync and here you can use track post dot id and this is the code we'll be having and we need to go into this one and here i can have okay async why it is not coming means so here we need to add the in the imports common module so in as a part of the angular 19 so there is no need to mention standalone to true it is by default standalone only so if you want to not to make this standalone true standalone if you want to include this in a ng module means then you need to make it as a standalone to false here okay so then only it will work so here by default it is a standalone so there is no need to mention this one as standalone in angular 18 we need to mention this one as explicitly standalone to true but now it is not needed so here we can have a td okay so here you can have this one as post dot title and here i can mention post dot body that's it so now if you try to see the output so here if you refresh this page so you will be able to get everything so if i try to check whether this one will be a part of this page source or not if you want to see it means automatically here it will be a part of the source so here you'll be able to see the entire code you will be able to observe so carefully if you try to observe the entire code is there see how nicely the html content everything has not has been embedded into this one as a part of this one so previously client said html means you will not able to see the entire the data in the html in the source but now what it is happening here in the ng on init we are trying to make the get call so what will happen is the automatically the http client call and all those things will be cached by default the get request will be cached and there is no need for you to call the thing for example let's say that i will be having a get request let's say that here i will be having something like uh, button i will use the get post here okay and i will have a click request here click is equal to sorry click is equal to get post so we are having some get post method so now if i want to have this one get post then what can i do here so just directly i can use this directly here and in this one i can use this dot get post directly sorry this dot get post directly i can use it now if you try to see here then also it will not it will cache the request so the call will not be made 
when you try to click on this get post now the call will be made if you try to observe carefully now the call has been made so you need to understand one thing that the get request and all those things what are the things is there automatically the things will be cached the get request will be cached so there is there will be no need to initial render it will not be made but when of afterwards whenever you are trying once the page everything is loaded means then you are trying to make the same request means it will not be cached so this is one uh, beautiful feature available in the angular ssr you need to understand so now let's say that at the starting only i want to save the post let's assume so will this post request also will be cached let's see so here i will be having add post okay and uh, here let's try to see this dot http http dot post of post request i am trying to make and this one will return the post request here the same url you can have it the post request so here oh sorry <clears throat> the same request i can make it and this one will return the post okay and this will be why it is happening like this this dot http dot post okay so this one we can remove it and here we need to add it like this why it is happening everything i don't know so let's try to do it like this yeah so this is the http dot post and here i can have a single post single post dollar of observable of post or null is equal to null okay so this is our single post and here i can do this dot single post dollar is equal to that's it so now here this dot http dot post okay we need to send the argument so for this one we need to send the argument means so here i can send the title test post and also another one is test body okay so now we are trying to send this one so now when you are trying to so what is happened here so i can paste it like this okay title and also the body okay so now we are trying to send the body now if you try to see here so at the initial time when you are trying to make a request here in the http call so if i uh, let's see whether it is oh here i got a request an error so let's try to restart this one let me restart so now here we are calling this add post so at the starting it is not calling why because we haven't subscribed to this one okay let's go to the http cache.html and here i will try to add the post here okay and this one will be add post and here i want to show the add post data also so here i can show something like do add post details and so here i will try to show the single post okay so here i can show something like at the rate if um, single post dollar of async uh, as post okay so we can use it directly like this not a problem and here so this one will be something like post dot title that's it so now the added post you will be able to see it here so if i try to show you here so test post it has been added and also if you are able to see that uh, ajax call the post request call has been made so that means the browser will be taking care of this post call whereas the get call and all those things so we are not able to see this get call why because the get post has called on the ngr init we are not able to see that get, get request has been made whereas this post request has been made so you need to understand that by default head request and get request and all those things will be cached by the server whereas this post request will not be cached so this will be done by the browser so that is one thing which you need to remember so this is the concept which i want to tell you but if you want to cache the post request also then what you need to do it is so here in our thing so in this client head question so you need to provide a special uh, uh, what i want to say is um, a special one with http with uh, i didn't remember exactly with http transfer cache options so you need to provide the cache options and in, inside this one you need to provide include post request also to true then it will try to cache the post request also now if you try to refresh this page so if you try to refresh this page so now the post request will not be cached so now here you will not able to see any post request here post request will not be made but if you try to see get post so you are able to get it but after the page is loaded when you try to click on add post then also you will be able to see the add post request also so this is how you will be able to cache the uh, what i want to say is client requests also so th this is the thing so now <clears throat> in this video what we have done we have explored how angular http client http caching works during ssr in the browser and also we have seen about the default caching behavior for the get and end request 
And also we have seen how to configure the caching for additional request types like post I have shown you. And I have shown you a practical example how to fetch and add the data with caching enabled. So this is all about how to do this one. So thanks for watching this video. So don't forget to like, subscribe and hit the bell icon for more Angular tutorials. I will see you in the next video. And if you have any doubts or any suggestions, please post the comments below to this video. I will try to give the reply. Thank you.